Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls, and welcome to this. This one's going to be my last Q&A video of the day. Uh, I'm trying to squeeze in one last one. It's 10.08 a.m. I need to really get some of the things edited and uploaded here. Uh, because soon my brother-in-law is going to be playing World of Tanks. And if I upload, it kills the internet in the house. And then, of course, that brings his ping from like 34 to 700. And then he gets really pissed. I don't blame him. So, I need to get this done. Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. I am the Internet's dorky grandpa. Glad to meet you. Hope you'll stay. Ah, Esteban Julio Ricardo Montoya de la Rosa Ramirez says, I've noticed you talking about medicinal marijuana, and I haven't really watched too many videos, so skip it, but it's already been addressed. How do I smoke it? I see a lot of people saying that combustion harms the lungs and that vaping is a safer way, but everyone I know who uses it medicinally doesn't vaporize it. Now, that is true. I do smoke medicinal marijuana like a chimney. I spent 52 years as a non-smoker and was pretty bloody proud of that bothered me for the longest time after I started smoking that I was smoking. Further research on cannabis has made it that I'm not so worried. Now, it's how do I smoke it? A lot of people combustion harms lungs and that vaping is safer. Very true. Burning anything causes carcinogens. Whether that's cooking a steak, because that causes carcinogens along the burnt edges of the steak. Burning paper, the smoke causes carcinogen. Burning plant matter, there's carcinogens. Anything you burn causes carcinogens. And that actually works on the uh, metabolistic level as well. As our bodies burn, uh, you know, sugars for fuels and all that, it creates free radicals. Free radicals can damage your system. Free radicals are also necessary, so it's not like it's totally bad. But, so, with that in mind, the thing is, too, if you smoke unfiltered cannabis versus filtered cigarettes, un unfiltered cannabis does drop 20 times more tar into your lungs than a filtered cigarette. The difference is the tar in cannabis is not like the tar in cigarettes, because in cigarettes, well, nicotine is not good for you anyway, so tobacco is right off the bat, bat, it's bad for you. And then on top of that, they treat it with 700 to 7,000 different chemicals, all of which are designed to further enhance your addiction. So they're damn carcinogenic, because 90% of all the chemicals they treat tobacco with is carcinogenic. Now. Cannabis, when you burn it, yes, does create some carcinogens, because you're burning it. But it, the carcinogens created by burning cannabis are the same kind of tumors that THC and cannabis that contains the THC hates. THC does actively hunt down and kill a busload of tumors. One of those kinds of tumors is what happens in your lungs. They had took a look and studied the lungs of long-time heavy cannabis smokers and discovered that their lungs were not much worse than non-smokers. Long-term heavy smokers and it was not actively damaging their lungs. So I smoke because yes, combustion harms your lungs. It's not good for you. You're inhaling smoke. It's hot, so it sears the cilia off of your, out of your throat, which is one of the reasons that smokers have such a hack, because they don't have the cilia to work stuff up out of their lungs. They have to physically cough it up. So that's not burning. Inhaling burning anything isn't good for you. Vaping is better. It's cooler. It only runs about 400 degrees, as opposed to burning, which is like 900 to 1200 degrees. And you're, so you're not getting the carcinogen. And depending on how you do the vaping, you can control how much THC and what types. Because lower temperatures on vaping redu releases some of the more minor THCs that are good for some things, but not others. More vaping at a higher one releases more things. And, and so, yeah, vaping is actually pretty good. 
I prefer smoking. You get, I find that I and others that I've talked to, they like vaping as well, but they don't vape all the time for the same reasons that I'm saying here. It's not as powerful a feeling. Part of that, it has been uh, theorized that that extra high feeling, that extra feeling that you're getting, is your body trying to recover the damage that you're getting from inhaling carcinogens and really hot smoke. I don't know if that's true, because your body fixes that damage really quick. But I don't vaporize, I smoke because I like the feeling better. And I smoke versus edibles because it's so easy and quick for the feedback to tell how much you need. If I smoke, within a minute or two, I can say, whoa, yeah, I, my hand still hurts. Smoke, another two minutes, go, oh yeah, that's almost there. Smoke, all right, doing good. Grand total, maybe six minutes I've gone from my hand hurting so much I can't use it to, yeah, I'm doing pretty good right now. Whereas if I eat the edibles, I have to eat, wait, 45 to 90 minutes for that to take effect and then judge the feeling. Now the difference between smoking and eating is that when you eat THC your liver breaks it down into metabolites that are four times more powerful than the THC you first take. So you can really pump your body full of THC and its metabolites by eating metabolites. But it's a 45 minutes to an hour and a half. I don't want to wait 45 minutes to an hour and a half to see how my hand feels to see if I need to eat more of a brownie. I don't want half my day going by with my hand hurting so much I can't use it trying to figure out how much THC I need. So I smoke six minutes versus six hours. That's why. Thank you very much for asking. I do like to talk about cannabis because it is so demonized for no good reason at all. It's not a gateway drug. You know, in fact, in the United States, we have got two gateway drugs. They have discovered that if you use these two gateway drugs as, you know, someone under 18, your chances of going on to use hard drugs are incredible. That is cigarettes, alcohol, two huge gateway drugs. They use cannabis, actually, to help alcoholics, heroin addicts, ease from their addiction back into sobriety. That's not a gateway drug. Lost, <laughs> Lost Goose says, how do I cope with the insecurities or fears, and is there a way for me to defeat them? Right now, I deal with secure insecurities and fears and anxiety through medications. And I wish that wasn't true. Normal insecurities and fears I deal with by trying to find ways to work around it, to train myself to not do things, but for the physical changes that I can't stop. Like I have anxiety now. I got that from my alcoholism. So I deal with that through medications, whether it's cannabis or prescription drugs. I really wish I could give you a better answer than that. But right now, I don't have one. Hey, hey, I'm back after I finally located my question here. Uh, SJ Canali says, how do you handle the pressure of people constantly asking me to react to things? Uh, generally, I do that by overworking myself to the point that I collapse uh, from exhaustion and then have to take a next day off and then the next day overwork myself to make up for having taken the day off. Literally, that's what I do. Uh, I get 200 plus suggestions a day. I physically could not do every single reaction. I can. Even if I only spent 10 minutes on each reaction and did not worry about editing or rendering or uploading, I could still only do 150 videos a day. That's not even as many as I get. So I can't. And how do I handle the pressure? Like I said, mostly by overworking myself. But largely what I have to do, and I've come to the realization, it's not helping myself or other people by going too crazy. Uh, I handle the pressure of people constantly asking by just smiling, 
and answering questions and then doing what I got to do because to do it any other way will kill me with overwork. Thumbs up. <laughs> Let's see if I this is in the same directory. Yes. Courtney Bond says, what are my, some of my favorite countries over the U.S. and least favorite? How many languages can I speak fluently and do I get stressed or annoyed when people keep nagging for reactions? What are my, some of my favorite countries? Uh, Germany, Brazil, uh, the United Kingdom, which ties into with uh, Scotland, Ireland. I've uh, got a lot of European countries that I enjoy. Uh, a lot of South American countries. I there are very few countries on the world that I actively look at and go, I don't like the people that run this place. And I'd really like to go around the world. I'd love to go to Brazil. I'd love to go back to Germany. I'd love to go back to the United Kingdom. I'd love to go to Denmark, to Norway, to all of, like Venezuela, Portugal, uh, any of these things. I'd love to go travel. My least favorite, any place that's basically a uh, theology, and especially a repressive theology. Uh, you people that live in theologies and repressive theologies especially know which countries you are. Uh, so what can I say? I'm not going to name names on that because so be it. Uh, how many languages can I speak fluently? Just English. But ich kann eine kleine bisschen Deutsch sprechen. Sehr, sehr klein of this in Deutsch. Uh, I know some sign language. At one point, I wanted to be a sign interpreter. But that's that's it, really. I know how to gre make greetings in other languages, but English, German, a uh, little bit of ASL, and that's it. I'd love to speak more. And stressed and annoyed when people keep nagging for reactions. The only time it really bugs me is when somebody will start, you know, go, you know, one day request, and then the next day request, and the next day request, and then the next day go, why aren't you doing my reaction? And then maybe the next day going, oh, so much for your promises for your fans. That's the only time it bugs me, because I want to do as much as I can for everybody, but I can't. I physically can't. So I get sad when I see that, but there's not a lot I can do. I can kill myself with overwork or I can do what I'm doing and just say, well, I'm sorry, but if you don't understand, that's not my problem. So I try that. And when I say, if you don't understand, it's not my problem, I'm not saying it to you as you listening or you're the person that asked the question. No, I'm saying that to people that go, why are you being so mean and not doing my request? It's like, if you don't understand why, when I can only do 150 requests out of a possible 200 if I did nothing but reaction videos and you still don't understand why I can't do it, there's you're never going to. And then Sabrina L, my favorite Men Melanie Martinez song I've heard at my favorite video, Dollhouse. Right there, Dollhouse. So far that has been my favorite. It is, I it's intense. I can understand why people like it. It's it's intense. For those people that don't like it, don't understand it and all that, they just don't understand. They can't help it. Gabriel Siegel asks, why shave beard for the win? I agree with you. The problem is I also have that, uh, there's a uh, psychological thing where you pull your hair you know and and I have that all my life I pulled my hair on as a kid I had a huge bald spot right here but I was able to as a kid talk to my teachers and say hey if you see me doing this can you make me stop and then so I went from there I started pulling on my eyelashes and my eyebrows and I said this is and so I've all my life I've constantly had to stop myself from pulling my own hair out and if you search it up on the internet this thing there are people that are 90% are bald because they pull their hair out you can't stop it it's it's a thing and so when my hair my beard gets long enough I pull it out a lot and I don't want to damage my beard follicles or anything like that so when I start going crazy and can't stop myself I trim it and then I let it grow back. 
eventually when it gets like this long again it's going to start driving me crazy again because it's 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 like a big thatch of furry fuzzy fluffy pubic hair on my face it's uncontrollable i mean so i'm constantly going up uh, because if my hair comes out like this and it gets into my vision it just drives me nuts so i pull out all the hairs that i can see so they don't drive me crazy and then when they get longer, I run my fingers through my beard, and I go, oh, and I idly pull out whiskers, and it sucks. So that's why I shave my beard periodically. I like it with a beard. I like the way it looked with a beard, but I don't like pulling it out. Ian, I can't pronounce your last name, says, what is the longest that you have gone without sleep? I used to go without sleep all the time. Back in the mid-90s, when I was an active alcoholic, when I got off work on the beginning of my Friday, I only worked four days on, two days off, so my weekend rotated slowly through the week, but on the day I got off work, I would work all night, then I would get home, and I would stay up all day drinking, and then I would stay up all night drinking, and then I would stay up the next day drinking. Now by this time, it's effectively Sunday, so then I spend the next time drinking until it's time for me to, you know, mo effectively Monday morning, because I work Monday night, I work nights, I would go to sleep that time, sleep for eight hours, and then start going to work. So I would effectively stay for three days every week drinking. I don't do that anymore. I can barely go 24 hours without collapsing now for uh, an hour or two hours without sleep. And then my last question of the day, Red Panda asks, how long do I see myself doing YouTube? I love your channel. It's always fun to see someone who isn't like 15 or 25. Thank you very, very much. I do appreciate that. And how long do I see myself doing it? Um, until the day I die. Literally, until the day I die. I want to be, you know, my last video would be my person who helps me editing it because I won't be able to edit and upload it because I'll die in the middle of doing it. I want to be 80 years old and die during a live stream, answering people's questions and reacting to stuff and playing games. That's how long I want to do it. Other than that, it's how, however long YouTube's going to let me until they change their system enough that only the big boys like, you know, Viacom and all that can afford to do it. So, we'll see. And now, if you got any comments or suggestions, you could drop them on down there. I do my best to answer every single one. Those that I can't, because of course I can't. I Let me start that one over again. Ugh. If you could drop your comments down there, I do my best to answer as many as I can. I thumbs up those that I can't, as many as I can. But I can't get them all because comments slip through, and there's so many comments. I'm just one guy with memory problems and... I try. There's also links to like uh, GoFundMe, Patreon.com, Patreon.com, uh, Facebook and Twitter, and others, but those ones suck, so just stick with those four. And if you can donate, that would be wonderful. If you can't or don't want to, that's okay too. Don't even worry about it. So thumbs up. I enjoy doing these videos. I doubt I've got anything further coming up, but I'm hoping to have amnesia if I can. So thumbs up. You take care. Have a great day. If I've got another video, I'll see you in it. And if I don't, I'll see you tomorrow. So until then, though, have a good day on the flip side.